I'm going to go off book just a little bit today. I'm still going to preach part of my message. But I think it's important as we are talking about our sermon series in the book of John, we're going to start um, today. We're going to talk about truth decay. Truth decay. I want to be respectful, but I want to be very upfront because I think that there's something about giving honor when you can be clear with people up front, setting clear expectations and, and the boundaries. And so I, I, think it's under, I, I think it's vital that we understand on the premise by which we are gathering today. Issues that we're dealing with today, and, and so it's important that what I say today is based on these evidences or these truths, okay? We believe in biblical marriage, okay? One man, one woman, that's biblical marriage, okay? We believe in two genders and biblical sexuality, okay? We believe that. We believe in the right to life, okay? We believe in the rule of law with responsible policing. And we believe that we are all created equal, okay? I say that because we have a serious problem called truth decay. And it started in the church. It started in Christian circles. It started with just being silent on issues. The world would talk about things, but the church wouldn't talk about things. Because we were afraid of maybe being offensive. But what happens is, is we we go down a path where then we have no power. We have a form of godliness, but we deny the power. And how do you deny the power? You deny the power of God if you do not deny the word of God or the truth of God's word. And so therefore today we got to talk about God's truth. Not my truth, but God's truth. Years ago, my wife and I, we attended a uh, seminar. And it was a several day seminar. And... Uh, Each session, they had on the sign, a a sign on the whiteboard, and it said, tell the truth. Next session, it was the same saying, tell the truth, but it was bigger. Every session, it had the same words, but it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And what they were trying to communicate is until we're honest with ourselves, we can't be honest with one another. And the problem is, is we have a society that would rather live by feelings than by truth. And it's really not the younger generation's fault. It's their parents' fault. Right? Well, you know, these parents have had their kids and they put them in this little plastic bubble and tried to insulate them from the world and, and reality and, and any kind of bumps and bruises, right? And, and the teacher can't talk sideways to that child or the parent will show up. Don't you talk to my child that way. Or the boss can't talk to their child. In other words, the parent will show up because the parent was there with the job interview because the parent not only had to sit in the job interview and explain things, but also had to be the transportation. But I want to say that all of these problems started when we took dodgeball out of school. Can Can we just be honest? I mean, every kid needs a ball in the face at least once, right? Maybe a little bloody lip or nose. Come on, to know that life hurts sometimes. Life is not fair. Life is is difficult and challenging, but the problem is you can't be 42 years old and just leave mom and dad's house and figure that out. In other words, if you don't get your way, suddenly you need time out and safe spaces and coloring books and Play-Doh. And the only person that is, people that are allowed to come in here is the people that agree with me. I believe in open debate. 
I believe it in open debate. Matter of fact, we tell people, if, if you're watching right now and you can't stand me, you hate my guts, you think I'm a hater, you think I'm a, a chauvinist, you think whatever, you know what? We'll allow you to say whatever you want as long as you don't have vulgarity and as long as you're not making death threats. In other words, you meet Oakley. <laughs> no, but why? I'm not afraid of open debate. I'm not afraid to allow you to state your opinion because people have opinions all the time, right? Everybody's got some elbows and everybody's got some opinions. I'm not scared of opinions because I live by the truth and the truth is what satisfies my heart. But people would rather live by their feelings. So much so that the truth is considered dangerous today. It's toxic. It's being sterilized from our society like it's some kind of pathogen. Really, COVID isn't the issue, it's truth. And that's what they're trying to eradicate. That's what they're trying to sterilize. That's what they're trying to get rid of is truth. Objective thinking. John 18, 37, Jesus is standing before Pilate as he's been arrested and soon to be put to death. And Pilate said, so you're a king. And Jesus responded, You say I'm a king, but actually I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize what I say is true. You see, Jesus wasn't caring about his title. He was caring about his purpose. I may have a title king, but that's that's not my purpose. My purpose is to carry truth, to deliver truth, to bring truth to people, because it's that's the only thing that will set people free. Not catering to your feelings. Anybody that's married knows that. Anybody that's married twice definitely knows that. (laughs) But what did Pilate say? He says, well, what is truth? What is truth? Then he went out again to the people and told them, he's not guilty of any crime, but you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year at Passover. Would you like me to release this king of the Jews? But they shouted back, no, not this man. We want Barabbas. Because Barabbas was a revolutionary. We want Barabbas. See, Jesus said that I came to bring the truth, to testify to the truth. He's saying that his truth doesn't change, it doesn't bow, and it doesn't kneel to any ideology. Doesn't matter what the agenda is. Doesn't matter what the label that you put on it. Doesn't matter how many people collectively gather together and chant whatever they want to chant. It doesn't overcome truth. And soon he will be killed for that truth. And this is why we must stand for our freedom of speech. Because they want to eliminate anybody that speaks against their objective, their agenda. See, right now, somebody's going, man, this sounds political. You need born again because it's biblical. This is biblical. This is a spiritual fight. This is a spiritual battle. But see, the problem is too many people, they found, they found this new Jesus. We would call him the, uh, the emotional Jesus, right? The emotional Jesus only preaches love. Can you put that up? The emotional Jesus only preaches love. Love, But the truth Jesus preaches love based on the word of God, on truth. The emotional Jesus will give you what you want. But the truth Jesus will get you what you need. The emotional Jesus never says anything negative that might hurt your feelings. But yet the truth Jesus will warn of sin, judgment, and hell. The emotional Jesus is all about being loved and accepted by the world, yet the truth Jesus is hated and rejected by the world. The emotional Jesus, it it serves your will, not the will of God, but the truth Jesus lifts up God's will, not our own. And the emotional Jesus hates to offend you or anyone else. But you know what? The truth Jesus offends the world with the truth. And yet we, we sit here and we listen to philosophers and, and agendists and activists of the day today, and literally they're saying the same thing that, that Pilate said. What is truth? Truth is subjective. 
As a matter of fact, you know, here you got Pilate, representative of Rome, and we know that Rome decided what truth was because they had the power. There's an old saying, he who owns the gold makes the rules. That's not completely accurate. He who owns the gold that can pay for the biggest army makes the rules. Hence, that's why we had 30,000 of our troops sitting around Washington, D.C. Think about it. He who has enough gold to buy the biggest army. And this is why we are not going to give up our guns. Now, listen to me. I'm not advocating violence in any way. What I'm advocating is defending your rights. Okay? So where we have defunded police, and it's only going to get worse, guys. I mean, criminals are being emboldened left and right because the police, their hands are tied like you wouldn't believe. And you know what? You may not, you may not care for the police until you need the police. <laughs> but as we are living in this day and age, there's a lot of things that we can do before we... Because somebody asked me the other day, at what point... At what point do we take up arms? I'm like, whoa, chill. You know, that's what they want. They want somebody to be crazy so that they can be emboldened to take away and confiscate our weapons. Don't be stupid. Don't be hasty. There's so much more that we can do, like voting, like sign waving, right? But some people don't want to do the little things. They would just rather do the big things. Well, then go live in Afghanistan, Right? Go, go live there because there's other things that we can do here to get our country back. Okay? Some of you can run for office. Some of you can run for school board. Some of you can show up and, and start talking to, to people and communicating with people. You can be supporting the legislators that are working on our behalf. Right? Be praying for them. We're only a few legislators from being able to take back this, this state. But you see, we, our society, they like the idea that truth is subjective. In other words, it's like a lie. A lie is easier to deal with than the truth. Because when a lie wears out, you can get a new one. Right? So, so what we have is, we have, and, and I'm saying leftists, activists, people that are lawless in nature. What they'll do is they'll tell a lie that will suit their agenda. And then when that lie wears out, they'll tell a different lie. And then what happens is born-again people look at that and we get frustrated and say, why can't the world see the hypocrisy? Because God already said the God of this world has blinded the eyes of the unbelievers. So don't expect the world to see the lies because they already believe a lie. All right? That's why lies work for those that are lawless. Lies benefit the author not the reader. Now, all right, Seahawks are playing today, but, but work with me a little bit, okay? Work with me. So let's pretend the Seahawks are in San Francisco and they're going to play the 49ers, okay? Who's going to win? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, we got two lawless communities playing each other, so who knows? But, <laughs> but, but let's say we show up to play the 49ers, and they punt us the ball, and we catch the ball, and we run it to the 25-yard line, and we get tackled. And they start celebrating. And we're like, what are you celebrating about? And they say, we just scored. What do you mean you just scored? We have the ball. We just caught the ball. You tackled us at the 25. We possess the ball. How can you possibly score? Well, you're playing on our turf, and we make the rules. Now, wait a minute now, because we came here and there were rules before we got here. And we agreed to these rules and we have, we have umpires that are on the field, judges, making sure that everybody's following the rules. But what happens is the judges are complicit 
The reps are in on it with the 49ers, and they say, there's more of us than you. So whatever I say goes. My rules matter, not yours. So therefore, the Seahawks are like, well, that's not fair. They don't care. Oh, wait a minute. Now, some of you play Monopoly. Now, if I could have that, that experience of lawlessness and you have this sense of justice, guess what I'm going to do? I'm on free parking every time I roll. <laughs> Wait, you're 12 spaces away from pre- free parking. You only rode two. Well, two don't mean two today. It means 12. <laughs> you see what's happening? Yeah. And by the way, you're going to jail. <laughs> but I didn't draw that card. I drew it for you. Are you, are you seeing what's happened? See, we have more respect for monopoly than our own lives. As we sit silent and they keep changing the rules on us. This is why I have such a problem with the agenda that is trying to push on us that there are more than two genders. Because now what you've done is you've disrupted science, you've disrupted math, you've disrupted reasoning, you've disrupted the word of God. When you do that, you've given them the ability to make whatever change they want to make whenever they want to make it. Two weeks. Just give me two weeks to flatten the curve. 600 days later. No, no, now it's 2024. Look, this is the challenge in working with lawless people. They can burn, they can attack, they can hate, threaten, loot, steal, deface property. They can block traffic, they can intimidate, they can cancel people, they can dox people, they can get people fired, they can attack police officers, they can go to their homes, they can change genders, change definitions. They don't have to be accountable because they can cheat, steal, lie, and murder so long as it moves their ball down the field. They have no rules. And the Lord prophesied that this would be lawless days and it's on us. And we have people going, what's going on? That's why the Bible says to be sober-minded. Pay attention to what is happening. There are no rules. But you know what? You don't have to get nervous. You don't have to get scared because truth always prevails. Now, I know that there are those well-meaning individuals that think that we can, we can all coexist, like the bumper sticker, coexist, but we can all coexist with these people that have no rules, okay? We can just join hands and say, we are the world. We, we, are, we are children or his children? The, the, it's not his. See, they took it out, right? It's, it's just humanism. Okay? Why did I come over here to get the answer to that? I have no idea. You drink Coca-Cola, don't you? <laughs> Second Corinthians 6.14 says, Don't be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness... Righteousness has rules and, and, and truth and foundations that are unequivocal and lawlessness. What fellowship has light with darkness? And I love this. I love this. I love this. Check this out. Watch this. All right. Um, everybody online, just be patient with me. Okay. All right. Look at that. I'm an iPod commercial now. Okay. All right. There's darkness. There's light, okay? So right now, darkness was dominating until light showed up. Which one won? Did you hear light quivering in the shadows going, how can we do it? There's so much darkness. Right? No, we just push a button. Here comes the power. Here comes the power. All right, so Friday night, we went out and we sign waved. All right? Anybody that would, like, be against political stuff going on in church, their minds just went, okay? Because we believe in taking back our schools. Okay? 
in our city council. And so what did we do? We went out and signed away. Now, Friday night marked an occasion. It was probably the largest sign waving gathering in all the history of Puyallup. Now, the individual that is opposing our values was there with their four people. <laughs> and, and so what happened was we were there two weeks ago, and we, we took about 30 of us down. We just said, anybody want to go? Come on. If you want to support godly values, if you want to do that, come on down with us. Okay. So we go down, and then the opponent showed up, and I went, mm-mm. In two weeks, we're going to own this whole block. Yeah. Right? We're going to own this whole... And some people there... Look, some people aren't into this kind of faith. They're not into this kind of Christianity. They would rather sit in church and let somebody else do the work. Okay? Some people, they, they don't, they've never been measured with their character and their integrity. And, and so I'm sitting there and I'm going, I, look, I'm not mad at the guy. I'm mad at the spirit that is working on the guy. Okay? And, and we just need more people, two genders. He don't believe that. You understand? One is delusional, one is not. And yet people just want to sit quiet. And, no, that's, that's, that's getting, you know, in, in, into the, 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 the nitty-gritty of, I, I just can't do that. I just want to say, now I lay me down to sleep. Hmm? We, we, we want our little candle lighters, and we want our little, you know, and just keep very, and let the world continue to dominate. So we're there. We owned the property. They didn't know where to stand. That was very philosophical of them, too. <laughs> and what, what we see is there is a spirit of life that we brought to that corner. There was a spirit of truth that was brought to that corner. And let me tell you something. I can't tell you how intimidating that is to darkness. Hit the lights, look out. See, light showed up. If we would just show up, 3% of the population fought in the Revolutionary War and took it away from Britain. The greatest power nation on the planet 3%. It's amazing what we can do. But you know, sometimes good people get caught up in the moment. All right? So, you know, you think about it. We, we can see in the word where some of the biblical or the Jewish leaders got into the crowd when Pilate came out to say, you know, it's, hey, he's going to give us an option to release somebody today. We want Barabbas. Don't you choose Jesus. If you choose Jesus, you won't be allowed in synagogue anymore. If you choose Jesus, we're going to blackball you. We're going to dox you. We're going to cancel you. And so Pilate came out and said, hey, it's your custom. I released one prisoner. You, one prisoner. So do you want Jesus? No, give us Barabbas. It's amazing how mob rule will change good people's sentiments, and suddenly they'll just fall in. This is why, listen to me, we have to be very careful with this, uh, this concept that's going out, let's go, Brandon. Okay? Just because it's being shouted in a stadium doesn't mean everybody's on board. Sometimes it's just mob. Sometimes it's just the group. Come on, it's... And we as Christians, we're better than that. We're better than that. We have to be careful about slogans. We have to be careful about sayings. We have to be careful about little cliches because it can put us into a corner that makes us look less than we are. One person said, you will know the truth and it will hurt your feelings. <laughs> Anybody that's married knows that one, right? It was Herbert Hoover that said this. He said, it's a paradox that every dictator that has climbed to power on the ladder of free speech, immediately on attaining that power, 
Each dictator has suppressed all free speech except his own. That's what we're seeing today. And literally, it's just a small percentage that is screaming very loud. Why? Because that's all they know to do. This is why lawlessness cannot reason with truth. This is why we're not afraid with open debate. This is why we're not afraid to sit down and have conversations. And, and two people disagree. But when the truth is so obvious, they can't reason with it, so they yell at them. They scream because they can't take the truth. I think it's interesting that we see that I can change my feelings, but I can't change the truth. So there are times that you're feeling, you don't feel saved, you don't feel married, you don't feel employed, you don't feel rich, you don't feel good looking, you don't feel beautiful. You can change your feelings. But don't try to change the truth. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to live by our feelings. The Word says it's impossible to please God without faith. And faith will contradict your feelings all the time. And if there was ever a time for the Word of Faith movement to rise up, it'd be now. Start living what they're preaching. Amen? Amen? I know people in my own camp. People in my own camp wrote books. Woo! Faith! Where are they at today? Faith is more than just a good sermon or taking a good offering. It's living in the face of adversity, living the faith. Romans 8, 14 says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And this is why we have to be surrendered to the Spirit of God, not our feelings. Look, we don't live by feelings. Feelings can accompany our decision. They can be a part of our decision, but they cannot be the premise of our decision. If that was the case, some of you wouldn't be at church this morning if you were led by feelings. And I'd be one of them. Sorry, too much truth? <laughs> I, I, I was tired this morning. My alarm went off. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I like dove into REM. I was in a good dream. I got out of the bed before, even before I turned my alarm off. I'm like, oh, where is it? Stop. You got to put your flesh in check. <laughs> Romans 2, 5 says, but those, but, but because you are stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin, you're storing up terrible punishment for yourself. For a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. And he will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good. Seek after the glory and the honor and immortality that God offers. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves. Live by their feelings. Who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. There will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil for the Jew first and also the Gentile. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good. For God does not show favoritism. We may have truth decay but we can go get a good spiritual teeth cleaning. I'm not into dentists. And if you're a dentist here, I'm not against you. I'm for you. I really am. But, you know, if I'm going to get a teeth cleaning, I'm going to eat a box of Oreos before I go so I get my money's worth. <laughs> right? <laughs> Clean these babies, yeah. <laughs> right? Right? Jesus is in the cleaning business. Worship team, will you come? We have a few people that need to be on station. 
but as soon as they're in place, I'm going to ask if everybody just not get up and leave these next few minutes because they're the most important moments of the service. Let's go ahead and take your places and then nobody else, nobody else leave. Please respect this. Because this is the most important part of the service. Reality check. There's a lot of people that are going to go to hell because they didn't hear the truth. They listened to their feelings. I feel good. I I feel okay. There's some people that they actually think they're saved maybe because their parents had them christened or sprinkled as a baby. Some of them They think they're saved because they've attended church on Christmas and Easter. Not just Christmas, Christmas and Easter. (laughs) There's some people, they think they're saved because they actually serve in church. The Bible says there's no one righteous, no, not one. And our works, our effort doesn't save us. Yeah, but I'm... I'm better than my neighbor. Doesn't matter. We're all born into sin. And if nobody told you this, you could go to hell with the wrong information. And here's the funny thing. This is what the church has done in America. We've made getting saved an embarrassment. Hear me. Eyes closed, closed head bowed, and if you want to get saved, you take that little card out and you check mark it. Nobody will know. We don't want to embarrass anyone. And you know what? I was a part of that. I had that mindset, that philosophy for a while because I wanted to be gracious to people. But what we did was we gave people a false assumption of what salvation meant. This is the best, the best and the biggest decision of your life to be proud of. To stand and say, I'm born again. I choose Jesus. And I want to tell you up front, this is what it looks like. Eyes are going to be open. Heads are going to be up. And if you raise your hand to receive Christ for the first time, or maybe you want to come back to Christ because you've been on a different bus going the wrong way, and it's time to come home. If that's you today and you raise your hand, we're not going to make it a secret. We're going to make it public, and we're going to celebrate your decision today. But you have to decide. Jesus said, if you acknowledge me before others, I will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. If you deny me before others, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. So today, you can choose Christ. And by not choosing Christ, you can deny Christ. And you can go to hell with a bunch of strangers. That's a reality. Look, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. It's not enough just to know that Jesus is real. you got to surrender to that truth. Okay? And some of you, you're like, I'm 99% sure I'm saved. Well, then you're 100% wrong. You got to know that you know that you know that you know. If you got a question in your heart, if you got a doubt in your heart, you need to make it right with God. Now, listen, if you have given your heart to the Lord, you don't have to get saved again, right? You don't have, oh, I got to get saved again. I, I had a bad thought this week. Stop it. God's love is not that fragile. Okay? I'm talking about somebody that got on the bus and said, I'm done with God or somebody that's never given their heart to Christ, okay? I'm gonna count to three, and then you'll lift your hand, and then we're gonna pray a prayer with everybody that's watching live on the internet. I'll say the words, you'll repeat them after me, okay? All right, are you ready? This is the best part, all right? One, two, get ready, three. Lift it up if that's you today, anyone at all? Anyone at all? Oh, you guys are so primed, you're ready. You're like, All right, let's pray with those that are watching. Heavenly Father, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. I accept your son Jesus as my Lord and Savior. 
live in me as I live for you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen.